Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Today we have the uh, Today we have the uh, Integra on the dyno. It's off the lift. We just got done doing a straight pipe on it and doing a sound comparison between the Skunk 2 muffler and uh, straight pipe. On the Integra, it was on the lift in the last video, but now it's on the dyno. And uh, we're going to be getting it tuned up and uh, installing this three port Mac valve onto the Integra. So I got this from Jason Martinez. Um, I think he's calling his uh, shop High Boost Motorsports. I don't know if he has a Facebook page or anything yet, but Jason Martinez is who I got this through. Um, so it's a three port solenoid with a bracket on it. So we're gonna install this into the car somewhere, probably on the, uh, you know, strut tower or somewhere that, uh, we're just gonna install this somewhere in the engine bay uh, where it's not gonna melt or whatever. Uh, he also supplied a couple fittings. Uh, I have a couple fittings as well and some air brake push lock hose. So I love using that stuff. It's super easy to come on and off um, instead of dealing with barb fittings and zip ties on vacuum line. This stuff is just like click it and forget it. So um, I also have a Speed Factory four bar map sensor that I told you guys to buy in the video titled what parts to buy for your 600 horsepower capable uh, K series car. This is the map sensor. I have not installed it yet because um, I wasn't running over 10 pounds of boost, which the factory sensor can read up to 10, but when we put this boost controller in, we might run a little bit more boost than that. So we're gonna need a map sensor that is capable of reading more than 10 pounds of boost, which this four bar is plenty. So first things first, I'm gonna get this uh, solenoid mounted in the engine bay. So we're gonna take this over to the car and uh, mount it. <laughs> and I kind of already found a spot where I think I want to put it. The lighting's probably really bad shining that way, huh? Right now it's not too shab. Um, so there is a threaded hole here off of the driver's side engine mount. There's two threaded holes right here. And I think I'm just going to use that um, and mount this thing down here something like that so i found a bolt in my random bolt bin so i'm gonna get that tightened down you should have cut it or <clears throat> i don't know what you prefer to edit long clips or short clips hmm? great clips i really should have grabbed an extension <clears throat> I'm not gonna crazy crank on that thing because this is just a plastic mount. Um, but I only have one of the bolt holes because there's no one that lines up on this side. I think one is plenty. This thing's not going nowhere. Anywhere. Anymore, you said? Anywhere. Oh, it's not going anywhere? Yeah. Uh, so next, we're going to, uh, should we wire it or plumb it? I don't know what the difference is. Well, wiring would be putting these wires in a certain spot, and plumbing would be putting fittings into here and running the hose. What would you like to do first? Wire it. Okay. So, to wire these solenoids, uh, they need a power and a ground. One of, the, one of them needs to be controlled by the ECU, and one of them is controlled via the chassis ground or the battery or a switch power source, etc. So, we're gonna take one of these and run it to power and one of them to the ECU. Does it matter which one? No, it does not matter which one. It's just a solenoid. It doesn't matter what side gets power or ground, it'll still function the same. Uh, same thing with injectors, guys. Always order injectors for me all the time. And they're like, what collar wire goes to what spot on the injector? It really doesn't matter, it's a solenoid. Solenoids don't really care what side gets power and grounded. Um, from my experience, it makes no difference. All right, guys, so we are extending these wires because they are not long enough to reach inside of the car where the ECU is. So I'm just <clears throat> stripping back. Where's that? Uh, some of this wire. 
Where's the ECU? Mm -hmm. The passenger floorboard. Why didn't we mount it over there? Mount what over there? That thing. Because the plumbing is right here. Oh. So we could mount it over there and have really long plumbing, or we can have long wiring, which I'd rather have the wires be longer than the plumbing. Okay. Personally. Just my opinion. So we're going to uh, tie these wires here. Ooh, do we have to solder? Yeah. That's fun. And I don't know about y'all, but I solder with a lighter a lot of times because uh, don't you want to use cheaper, that? It's cheaper, or it's not cheaper. It's uh, it's less time consuming than waiting for your soldering iron to heat up all the time. Oh. I wish it would stay where I need it. You want me to hold it? Yeah, right here. Don't burn me. There we go, now it's sinking into the wire. There, nice and solid. Get all the charcoal off of it. We'll put our heat shrink on. Do the other one. Well, hold that one. One turn out better. Put some tape over this as well. Actually, I don't even know if I have tape here. All right, guys. So I just put a heat piece of heat shrink over top of the uh, connections we just did. Now I'm going to run the wiring. I don't know if we should go maybe in front of the radiator, like under the under the core support, or if we should go this way. What do you think? If we go this way, we can follow this harness down and zip tie it. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm just going to tie this wiring and get it to that side where the battery box is. So I'm going to tie it up, try to make it clean. All right, guys, so I have the power wire hooked up to the solenoid. Now we just have to do the ground. Uh, you can see I ran the, uh, it's a zip cord actually, it's just like speaker wire kind of. <clears throat> That's two wires tied together um, in junction and then you can zip it down the middle. Uh, I ran it from the solenoid, tied it down through there. What? Nothing, you were general overviewing over there because yeah, you didn't I know didn't. what to film. <laughs> Funny and very accurate. Did I get you finally? You did. Because you get me every day. Do you uh, want me anyways. to like no, zoom it's, somewhere? I don't really fine. know what I'm looking at. I just wired right here. <laughs> Solenoid. Oh yeah. I tied the wiring down through here, up against the strut tower down through here, and then I tied it up onto the brake lines back there. Okay. So you have to give one side of the solenoid power and one side to the ECU. So. I took the zip cord here and I ran one of the wires into the fuse panel and I just tied it into the hot power right here. It can be switched or constant, it doesn't really matter. Um, I just run it here pretty much every time because it looks the best. So that's what I did. And uh, the other wire we're going to send into the cabin. Into the cabin. Yeah. I feel like I'm on a ship.
see if you can go grab it from the inside. I'm gonna send it through the firewall hole right here. Do you like want me to cut? Huh? I wanna see if you can cut. Was it like a game? What? Nothing. Yeah. Mm, I hear it. Oh, I see it. Right. Thanks. I am. It's one handed. It's a little hard. gonna tie these wires here so they don't get messed up a lot of zip ties at the shop and electrical tape there we go super pro super hack built What? That took a long time. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, now. We have to... Then we have to get at the ECU wiring. So down here is a K-Pro V4 PRB ECU. This car has a Jack Spania wiring harness and uh, we're going to tie in to one of these wires. I'm going to figure out here in a second. Um, so the ECU can control our boost controller. So if we open up the K-Pro app, or not app, the program. Is that where the future's going? I said app. Um, we're gonna open up the program and we're gonna go under the boost control tab on parameters and uh, we're gonna see what pin it tells us to use. So Honda K-Series ECU editor. That's what we're opening up right now. Am I supposed to be filming this? No, my computer's being really slow. So cut? All right, so we have our tune file pulled up here on boost control, and you can see right here. Oof. So it says enable boost control on B21. So pin B21 is what we're looking for. Um, and if we pull up a PRB wiring diagram right here on my phone, we can see ECM pin is a 24 pin uh, connector and it looks like it's gonna be the second one in. So we're gonna unplug it and find pin B21. I feel like I'm playing bingo. Right? So it's gonna have a notch on the top and a notch on the bottom. Yep. The notch on the top. So if we look at it this way, you can see where the latch is. Can you see on the camera or no? Probably not. Yes. Your big old tripod's getting in the way. <laughs> can you see now or no? I don't know. Can you? Can you see through the screen? Well, I see a white chunk. Is that good enough? Want me to zoom? You could take it off of the tripod. I like the tripod though. Just film right here. How am I supposed to get there? supposed to stand like this yeah okay so if we look at our connector this is the B connector and you can see where the latch is on the top that actually clicks into the ECU um, all the numbers are gonna be lower here and then higher as they get to the bottom so if we look at our connector diagram the bottom if we look at it like this oh uh, this is from the ECU side, so this is a little different than what uh, than what we're looking at. So the numbers are going to go right to left instead of left to right. 
So we're gonna skip one that's gonna be right here, where my fucking nasty fingernail is. I know it is right here, so we're looking at it this way. Mm -hmm. So on this diagram, we would have to look at the connector from the wire side, not the plug side. And you can see B21. is going to be the second to the right from the notch. So if we look at it, let me get this connector over here so it's easier to work with. So it's gonna be the second from the notch. So right down there. So we're gonna have to shove a wire through that or put a pin in there. I don't have any pins here, so we're just gonna shove a wire through it. Uh, it's going to be the second one from the block off. I don't know if you guys can even freaking see this, but... So you see the block off? It's the second one to the right that's an open spot. So we're going to take our wire, and we're going to hillbilly it in there. Because I don't have any pins here. Actually, I do have a pin right here. Maybe we could use one of these. These are extra pins that came with this thing. Let me see this here. Um, oh. Sorry. Okay, hold it and shove this pin through. Oop. Can't you like take this out or something? Take the plug out of the car? No, I can't. Well, this is a hassle. Yeah. Okay, the, la the lock is on the bottom, so we gotta look at the lock on the pin. The lock on the pin right here. I'm gonna grab a pick and try to shove that thing in there a little farther. So I have the ground wire from the solenoid going into B21. Uh, this connection is nice and tight. And I soldered and heat shrinked onto the connector that had the pin. So this is all done. We're gonna test this quick to make sure it's wired properly and verify it works. So we're gonna go into the Honda. You wanna turn the key forward? One more click. So now we can go to online and we can go to tools. I don't know if K-Pro actually has a test output uh, thing. I'm just going through here trying to find it. On S300 it's under online and then tools. <coughs> yeah, I don't know if uh, uh, K-Pro has a option for it. We can <clears throat> we can just try it right here though. Um, I'm just gonna turn the solenoid on, <clears throat> um, and we'll see if it's buzzing. Ooh, not that. Oh, <laughs> that was really good timing. <laughs> Would you like me to come out there? Huh? What? Do you need me to come out there? Yeah, come over here and tell me if this starts to buzz. <laughs> You're gonna have to edit this. <laughs> okay, could you get off me, please? Go off. <sighs> finger on it and tell me if it starts to vibrate. Is it going to buzz anytime soon or? So the key's on right now. I'm gonna blow into the map sensor to activate the solenoid just to see because I don't think it's got a test output option. And we have to swap the map sensor anyways. So 
ahí, pero aquí igual. Nothing. Nope. Maybe you need to blow harder. No. That's what she said. I think that's what he said, but. Thanks. So the boost control solenoid is working. Uh, we had to kind of do a hillbilly way of testing it. Um, but Should it works. Uh, if my lovely assistant would like to start the vehicle. data log here if we look uh, we have map sensor right here and then we have boost controller duty cycle right here uh, to test this we need to get the map sensor to read above zero pounds and if we are just uh, these are my settings currently that are in here for the boost controller enabled 35 Hertz fixed duty cycle at 50% activation pressure is at zero. If you try to do negative PSI, the controller and stuff doesn't work from what I've seen so far. Uh, so fixed at 50, 35 hertz. So as soon as the map sensor sees above zero pounds of boost, that solenoid should be activating. So if we go to display here, how are we gonna get the map sensor to go above zero? Well, I'll show you. That way this, boost controller duty cycle will go to 50 like I'm telling it to. All right, so to get the map sensor to read uh, above zero, we can trick it by just unplugging it. When we unplug it, it defaults to like 10 pounds of boost or something. And then you'll hear the solenoid start to buzz. I'm gonna hold the throttle uh, while I unplug it because it's gonna run like complete shit and run really rich. We know the solenoid's working. We can proceed to start plumbing. That's probably the most hillbilly way to test out a boost solenoid. But we did it, we know it works. So, uh, we might as well put our four ball map sensor in here. So we're just gonna take that out. We're gonna put the new one in. All right, four bar, very tight fuel. Now to program the four bar, all we gotta do is tell the K-Pro that we're running a Omnipower or Hondana four bar sensor. Go to the parameters, go to map sensor, turn the key forward, and then we go to replacement map sensor, and we click Hondana. Omnipower 4 bar. And we hit upload. Okay, you want to start it? Well, seems like it's running the same. That's good. Oh, that the just, wiring. I just hit it. Huh? You started before I hit record. Yeah. All right, so we know that the wiring is good and verified. Now we're going to plumb the uh, boost and vacuum lines into the solenoid. So I have two 90 degree push lock fittings coming off each end of the solenoid here that I just threaded in. So we're gonna hook a hose onto one of them and we're gonna tee into our boost reference line, which comes from our intercooler pipe. This could also come from the intake manifold, The turbo outlet right here usually, not here on VS Racing Turbos. This is actually a speed sensor where my finger is. This is not a boost port. So just leave that capped if you don't have a speed sensor. So you either gotta drill the turbo here, which I prefer to just drill the intercooler pipe, so I did that on this car. We're gonna cut this line and we're gonna tee it. This line 
goes to the bottom of the wastegate right now. So this line actually runs all the way back here and then way back in here you can probably see where it tees into the bottom of the gate. So way down in here. There it is right there. So below that line is an open port right now. That open port below it is the top of the wastegate. So the top of the wastegate is where I'm gonna put this fitting and we're gonna run the other side of the solenoid to it. So first we're gonna cut this line and we're actually gonna tee it. So I usually cut this stuff with a razor blade. And then we have a T fitting right here. So we're gonna have one end going into the T. Okay, and then one end going into the other side. Then we take this new hose and we're gonna run from the T up to this side of the solenoid. That's very precise measuring. Yeah, you like that? so it doesn't uh, rub on anything and then the other end I'm gonna put that fitting that I was just talking about I got to put this into the top of the wastegate then we're gonna run another line from this side of the solenoid to the top of the wastegate so if we look at Mac valve online this is the diagram I'm going off of so you can see the open port in the center, which is port three. So if we look at it to the left is the top of the wastegate and to the right is the T fitting going from the bottom of the wastegate and to the intake or the boost source. So that's the one I'm going off of and you were filming the wrong spot. This is what I was trying to show. I think it's all in there though, is isn't it? it? So like I said, three here, top of the wastegate is the, the right side of the solenoid. This side of the solenoid. And then this side of the solenoid is the boost source. Oh, it's dumb. Okay. Is that a stress relieving vape? Yeah. All right guys, so it's all plumbed in. You can see that my line's all hooked up. I'm probably going to uh, make sure they're not gonna rub anywhere, put a little bit of tape or something so it doesn't rub metal on metal. I gotta do that with this intercooler pipe too because it, it sags down and it's actually rubbing. So I'm just gonna make sure uh, all my rub points are not going to uh, get anything frayed or uh, get it away from the heat, any sharp metal, etc. So I did that um, and then back behind the manifold where the wastegate is, I had to put that fitting in and tie the lines away from the exhaust and away from the heater core lines. Um, and I was doing that with my right hand and I was a very you know, responsible turbo installer and put a turbo blanket on this car and heat wrap the downpipe because it's very close to the brake line so I didn't want heat you know, getting into the brake lines and stuff. So I heat wrapped all of it, but heat wrap is full of fiberglass. And when your arm is down in here, trying to get those lines and stuff. Uh, a few F-bombs happen to slip out? Yeah, a couple F-bombs. Um, just because fiberglass gets all up in your skin, it's disgusting. Yeah, it sucks. 
So I could probably wear a heat sleeve or something like that. Anyone wants to send me one, you can send me one. But I, I don't personally waste, I, don't, I shouldn't say it's wasting money because it's saving my skin probably. But I just can't get myself to buy stuff like that, you know? Like I could have been like, oh, I'm going to put my hand down by the hot exhaust and the fiberglass. Maybe I should put a sleeve on it because they make those. You want to buy me one for Christmas? And smudged it. I don't know. But, yeah. Screwing my arm up for views. Could you not just wear a long sleeve shirt? Or? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. But anyways, it's all plumbed up. It should work. Uh, we're gonna get out of here for today, but we got the boost controller and the map sensor all installed. Um, tomorrow, uh, we've just been spending like an hour or two a day out here, you know, getting some stuff finalized before dynoing this thing. And uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna get strapped down and we're just gonna focus on tuning it. So stay tuned for that video, guys. Have a great night and a better tomorrow. We will see you later. And uh, yeah. See ya.